Good. So, uh, with me today is uh, Vincent Biron. Oh, nice. Nice pronunciation. Yeah. Uh, the rector of Prague, who just had his premiere yesterday here in the cinema in the yes. Abaton. Um, can you tell our viewers a little bit what Prague is all about? Uh, Prague is a small independent movie that uh, I made with very little money uh, about a young kid called Steffi who is pretty much a, a loner and who falls in with a bad crowd that pulls prank and we kind of we kind of bear witness to the effect of uh, of what those printers have on the world and, and on Steffi as well. Yeah. Uh, how did you come up with, with these crazy prank ideas? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I the, the actual idea for the movie came about when I was like, uh, some, some of my friends invited me for April's Fool to go pull some pranks on people and it just made me curious about what kids were doing as pranks nowadays so I started watching YouTube videos and, and I think because of the hyper mediatization of, of, of pranks, uh, they've gotten really elaborate so kids nowadays are doing those really elaborate surrealistic pranks. So some of them came from what I saw online but some of them we just came up with in the writing process. So, yeah. Okay, and where did you find these wonderful actors? These wonderful actors, uh, Etienne was our lead actor, we kind of wrote the movie around them because I know I had this character called Steffi with a loner kid, but we know, it, we know Etienne from back in the days when he was a child actor and we kind of wrote the movie around him knowing what he could do comedy-wise and drama-wise. And the other actors, I just cast them, I invited people. Since we were a small production, the casting was all done, done out of my apartment, so I would invite people over, chat with them a little bit and do some screen tests and, uh, and that's how I, I did it. Okay, the, the film is a little bit shorter than the usual feature film, it's just 78 minutes. Yeah. Was that a conscious decision or what was the reason for that? Uh, it was a pretty short screenplay, actually like there, there's a saying in screenwriting that usually it's a page a minute and the, the, the screenplay is like, it was 80 pages. And yeah, we wanted to do like the equivalent movie-wise of a punk song, I mean because uh, movies nowadays tend to be a little bloated and like they, 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 they like to, to give you more for your money like thinking that like if the running time is longer it's gonna be better but this was really made consciously that because I wanted to do something really short and like a burst of energy coming out of the screen and that was purposefully made. Yeah. Uh, your film proves that again that uh, a film doesn't need a big budget <laughs> if you have a good story to tell yeah. so but would you have done anything differently if you have let's say an unlimited budget? Um, not really. I, I think what would I would I would have made. Of course, I would have had maybe dolly shots and like that that chase scene because there's a chase scene in the movie. Maybe it would have been more elaborate and longer. So of course, having no budget made me more efficient. So I think like to answer your question more shortly in a more concise manner, I would probably have done just a different movie because that movie came came about knowing we would we didn't want any money we'd like this it's funny because when you do a small independent film like this people are like oh so you made it with no money because nobody would give you money but it wasn't the intention the intention was really to go the DIY route like go back to what just a camera and some actors can do so so the movie came out of that uh, of that will so if, if I may speak like that yeah and I think it's perfect the way it is so I wouldn't change anything yeah. so uh, when where did you I would have uh, probably the the only thing that I would have I would have had made, made differently is we would have had better food on the set <laughs> if I had bigger money because it was pretty much me making sandwich the day before sandwiches the day before of the shoot so probably if we if we would have had money we would have had like some craft service or maybe like something like that nice. maybe some nice pizza once in a while <laughs> And where did you film? Uh, I, we shot it around Montreal, but I, I didn't want like because I didn't want to be precise. I didn't want like portray one aspect of what like how people in one part of the country live like, or, or I didn't I didn't want to make a statement about a region in specific. So we shot it around Montreal, but specifically choosing locations that evoke nowhere and everywhere at the same time so that that was another thing that was really made on purpose so we basically shot it all over Montreal and a little bit outside of Montreal because I, I didn't even want the, the audience to know if it was a big city or a small city like it's kind of hard to see what, what the city is like and I, I like it about it yeah. I like that about it and how long did it take from the first idea to the final film um, about a year and a half uh, 
the shooting was about a year total because we're shooting over the weekends because we were working around the school schedule of our main main actor. And after that, the editing, well, no, maybe more like two years actually, be, be, like until like the editing was all finished because that's the thing, when you don't have money, you have to take your time because like you can't ask people to work full time on the movie. So it was done like over a longer period. Yeah, you mentioned in another interview that you played the clarinet yourself. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and in the film, the main character plays it as well. Yes. So is the film in some ways some kind of autobiographical? Oh, I mean, yes, of course it is. Because I mean, I mean, it's hard for me like to make a film without it, without it having parts of me in it. And I was a loner kid. I was a geeky kid. But there's like a bit of me and all the of, of the characters. I mean, so yes, I played the clarinet and I was pretty bad at it. Uh, and I didn't like it that much. Uh, so yes, there's lots of aspects of that of that yeah. character though, that resonate with me. Quebec must be a very pro pro a productive environment, I think, uh, because since there are coming so many beautiful films from there. Yeah. Um, what's so special about Quebec? I, don't th I think it's our geographic location. It's just that because we have European roots, which are still very present. We still speak French, and like we're very attached to France. Uh, but at the same time, we're very, very North American in our way of living. Like we, we drive SUVs. Like we live in bungalows. Like so, like it really looks like America. And I think that's what I'm most proud about. Prank is because our film tradition was very, very European in the recent past. Like people were striving to make very European films. And nowadays, like our generation, are, are trying to make the two come together. And I think Prank is a good example of that because there's an indie American indie sensibility, while while still keeping our European like our, our artsy fancy roots, I guess, <laughs> in some way. And how well are you filmmakers in Quebec connected? Um, do you know each other or is it just everyone by himself? No, we're pretty much connected because I mean Montreal is such a small city, like it's about three million people, so the film community is like I wouldn't say well knit because I mean like any film like any community of ours like there's competition, so like sometimes there's conflicts and, and and that, but like we pretty much all know each other and we go to the same parties, so so and, and I think that's that makes for a great strength also. Because like you can always ask for favors and ask for people's opinion and like it's and the the film community is really film literate, which is really nice because people know their cinema and I think it, it, it may be may be contributing to the, the high quality output of, of our City. Um, are you enjoying Hamburg so far? What have you seen? I, I've seen. I went on a boat tour. Like I haven't seen that much because that's the thing. When you when you uh, <laughs> that's that's it, it relates a little bit to prank because I wanted to portray uh, teenagehood as a really insular experience. Like you're when you're with your friends, it's like you're in a little island. And film festivals are a little bit like that. Like you're really in a closed environment. Uh, so I didn't get to, to see much of the city because I've been talking to filmmakers and seeing their films. Uh, but what I've been what I've been see, seeing is beautiful and just very efficient and clean. <laughs> Germany is really efficient and clean, which is a cliche. I, I, I regret. <laughs> Like saying it, it sounds bad, but I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. As you just said, you're talking to a lot of filmmakers and, and uh, other people from, from yeah. the film industry. Are you able to watch any other films in the festival? Not yet, because <laughs> I just came in on Thursday, and now it's Saturday, and yesterday I was presenting my film and just talking to people. But tonight I'm planning to see, uh, I don't remember the titles, but there's one Israeli film and like a Thai, a Thai film that I, I'm going to see tonight. So I'm really looking forward to it. And I'm going back home tomorrow, so I won't be able to, to see much more. But I'll catch them some other time. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much.